Have any of you played Spirit Fair? No. Get ready for a Hollow Knight opinion, by the way. Look, I don't want my chat to be an echo chamber, but I, I do want to have a conversation about this. Um, I do like this game, by the way. I want to like say outright, I am playing it on Game Pass. I'm not hating it. It's not terrible, but it has highlighted a problem I've had for a while with a lot of indie games. I want to show you guys the trailer for Spirit Fair really quick. I don't know if we're going to watch the whole trailer. I just want to show you guys some gameplay. Okay, so a cozy game, right? So here's the, other than like the cozy aspect of it, the main point of the game is you, here, I'll just give you guys the quick spoilers for the intro of Spirit Fair, but to make my point, I have to. Um, it is a Caron simulator where you ferry the souls of the dead essentially to the afterlife, but you also help them come to terms with them being dead and help them complete any unfinished business that they have. It's very sad at times from what I understand. It's meant to be emotional and it starts with you, well, Stella, your character, waking up on a boat with Karon escorting you and going, oh, finally you're awake. Um, by the way, you're going to replace me. I'll be passing on soon. Your job is now to be the spirit fairer, blah, 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 blah. My problem with, it's not even with this game. It's a lot of games. I, I don't know. Let me get my thought out and I, I, disagree with me if you want. Um, VV was also as perturbed about why she was bothered with this as I am until I broke it down and then she also realized that this is something that's been annoying her with some games as well. Stella as a character doesn't tonally fit the presentation the game is going for. Um, she never really looks sad. The most you get from her is this type of expression in terms of anything but exuberant happiness and exuberant positivity. Happy. But the game is supposed to be emotional at points. It is supposed to be melancholy. You're supposed to relate to these characters. You are supposed to cry. You are supposed to be excited for them and at the same time very dour about the experience, but always come out the other side with uh, it was for the best I'm happy for them outlook. But the character never reciprocates. Though, <laughs> yes, yes, the dear mommy is hot. Yes. <laughs> um, the problem I have with Spirit Fair is every animation, when you're in motion, when you're doing anything, when anything sad happens, is never less than a seven, is what I'll call it, on the terms of, or on the scale of. 10 being you just got home from school, Halo 4 just came out, you haven't played it yet, you're super stoked, and one being your grandma died. You're never less than like a seven, but the game wants you to be sad. But the character that you're playing is never sad. Even when you wake up at the very start, you're never confused, you're never un uncertain. You wake up, you salute Karan. You wake up, you salute Karan, you go, yes, sir, I, I am, I, I'm ready, I'll be the spirit fairer, I'm dead, that doesn't matter though, I'm happy, I'm positive, I'm a cereal box mascot, I have one emotion, and I hint that there is something else, but I never commit to it. So, you're gonna disagree, but Legend of Zelda does this as well? Mm, I disagree because Link doesn't have, um any extremes to his emotional depth he is a blank slate on purpose what what i'm talking about is a similar what you could see as an issue but from a, another side of the extreme where stella in spirit fairer is always at a seven or higher she's never emotionally challenged by anything it feels like she's never taken aback she's always got a positive mental attitude and I I don't know what the, here here's where I I'm going to like 
have an issue with conveying my thoughts because I haven't thought about this fully yet. Um, and if anyone has any input on this, I welcome it because I, I'm still working through my thoughts on this, not with, not with spirit fairer, but with trying to find other examples. I feel like there's been a lot of indie games recently and, and a lot of games in general that they make this artistically very positive caricature of something and then it is that is the main character but they never commit to actually showing genuine reactions to emotional stressors it's almost a, a positive mental attitude personified always and if there are any games you guys can think of that have this same sort of to me it's an issue to me as even an artist it's an issue because I think if you're drawing something or if you're animating something, if you are bringing something to life, you should not make them one note, especially in an interactive medium like a video game. Because in the term or in the spotlight of spirit fairer, the point of the game is to bury spirits of the dead. Why should I be upset? or as upset as I could be if I look down from the dialogue box and my character is is just hands on hips excited about whatever is going on or just moderately perturbed by it, but they're not actually saddened. Link is very expressive in Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. Uh, true, Skyward Sword might be my, my favorite version of Link in terms of him being like a person. Uh, Twilight Princess, it makes sense why he's slightly stoic Wind Waker, he's very expressive. Wind Waker is probably what I would describe uh, Mario Wonder as in terms of expressiveness in the Zelda universe. It is Mario Wonder to the Mario games before in terms of expression, uh, expressionism, expression, avid. What, what's the word that I want? Expremity. False TP link is best link. Expressiveness. There you go. glacy has got it. Play Skyward Sword. It's so good. We could. I own it. I own it. I literally hear. That's my capture card. You, know, you can't see it, but you could hear it. Anyway, back to what I was talking about with Spirit Fair. Does anybody know what I'm like? What I mean? Where the character that you play as is a mascot character, and that's all they are. Um, I guess the way I would describe it, because I know I said cereal box mascot, but I don't know. Maybe this is dumb of me to say. Have you ever seen Tony the Tiger cry? Like, have you actually seen him cry? Emotional dissonance? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'm. Okay. I know I'm. I'm. I'm very much like I don't want my chat being a uh, echo chamber for me. I'm glad that at least you guys seem to get what I'm saying and where my problem is. Yeah, after he was harassed by furries, you mean when he was chased off Twitter? I'm just telling the tiger fever. <laughs> That's my favorite bit of Twitter history is when Tony the Tiger got chased off Twitter by furries and Chester Cheetah was like, I'll welcome you guys and draw as much porn of me as you want. <laughs> that was so much fun. Like if Mario was jumping through Eldritch, Eldritch Horror is going, wahoo, yeah. Okay, all right. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm glad I'm not insane because I I was slightly worried I'd come on stream and have another example of Hollow Knight <laughs> where it's just I'm crazy or it's like no, Stella's a Stella's not meant to be a, a slate. Stella's meant to be a, you know, her her own person and Stella is positive and that's Stella's thing and it's, it's like I don't nobody is like that. I I I'm fine with like drawing here. Okay. A character like Stella works in a static piece. If I'm drawing something and they're just supposed to be happy, then it, it makes sense. But if they're like always happy and then I surround them with corpses, it doesn't make sense. Then they're just detached from reality. And same with Kirby. It's more lighthearted and works well. Yeah, even Kirby like shows sadness. I'm five hours into Spiritfarer, I think, 
Granted, I'm five my hours of walking around and doing random things. And I haven't seen Stella even remotely annoyed or mad or sad. At most, it's just been kind of like confusion sometimes, but that's about it. Lurk. Thank you for the lurk, never. I always think of the Family Guy bit with Tony. Come on, smoke them up. They're great. Family Guy used to be so funny. Now it's not. Lately, he's been angry and screaming at the anger at times. Wait, well, hold on. Lately, he's been angry and screaming at anger at times. Tony? Wow, she seems so happy. How unrealistic. It, it's it's more of a... It, well, it's not... It's more of... That's not... It's a situation where I'm liking Spiritfarer, but... Son, I promise you this. I will give you the best criminal defense that money can buy. I, I don't understand why and here's where here's where my opinion's gonna get muddy because I this is just me working through thoughts real quick. I don't understand how you make a game like Spirit Fairer and you give up on characterizing someone. I I I, I don't get it. Because you're dealing with a heavy topic. I feel like you should do your best to make so it resonate. True. I feel like you should do your best to make it resonate with people. And I don't understand why you would stop at serial mascot levels of depth for your main character. Because it's a cozy, wholesome ind indie game. Yeah, but I feel like even Stardew Valley has emotional depth to it at times. And it's a cozy indie game about farming. And it, but there's characters where you genuinely see the repercussions of addiction. Like Shane is the the character I'd point to in that. And I don't I don't think it being cozy is an excuse to be lazy in that regard. I'm not saying the development of the game is lazy, but like the intellectual progression of a character or emotional progression of the character just feels a bit lazy to me. Yeah, sometimes you talk to them and learn their trauma. Yeah, and I like the thing is, in Stardew Valley, your character is a slate. So it's easier to not have them visually emote. But we just looked at the trailer for for uh, Spiritfarer and Stella isn't a, a piece of pixel art with mouth that is three pixel and eyes that are one pixel each. Stella is a is a character. Like Stella is animated. Like you can you can see Stella. You can you can clearly read the emotion on Stella's face. But I I I don't get it. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just easily detached from the world of the game that I'm playing. Yeah, here. Okay, here's a good example. Um, a spirit's like fading away and you just hug them. But Stella just looks surprised or she's marveling at it. Like, this is all I've seen. I've never seen anything lesser than this in this game so far. I've never seen anything genuinely emotionally compromised. And it doesn't make any sense because she literally wakes up and goes, Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm, I'm the new spirit fair. All right. Godspeed, Caron. Have fun. Enjoy the afterlife. I'm going to go play my cozy game now. Doesn't make sense to me. Speaking of, of trauma, did you see Elmo got attacked on live television? What? <laughs> A lot of times in serious conversation, they make little pictures. The little picture disappear. In Stardew? That sounds familiar. I haven't played Stardew in a while. What a shining beacon, beacon of stoicism. God bless. Larry David beat the heck out of Elmo. <laughs> All I've seen about Elmo this week is a tweet that was from the Elmo account going, how's everyone doing? And the people trauma dumped at Elmo. 
That's all I've seen. And then I saw crazy people trying to turn it into a fucking race thing for some reason. Which is really weird. Also, you can pick up the cat in Spiritfarer and you can play with it. Um, for the people that care about that, I don't. But it's a cool game. Just, I... I'm very disappointed at... A, again, this is where I'm not going to have a good argument on the spot. I have noticed it in other indie games. I have noticed this trend of main characters being presented with almost a fear of having any sort of emotional reflection of reality. And instead, they are the most positive mental attitude protagonists that just don't work. So, I don't know. I Again, I'm still working through these thoughts. I just realized it a few days ago, and I'm trying to think of other games that have done it. And it's kind of hard. <laughs> uh, I like maybe another one I would point to is uh, we played it a long time ago, Unsighted. Uh, there's a lot of problems with that game, other than that. But I feel like Unsighted didn't take its world seriously enough, even though its concept was everybody's on a clock, you just die very quickly, and that should be scary. But we don't see it. 